Yes, the Fire Joker, and... Why are you staring at me like that? <laughs> Why are you staring at me, he says. Is that what you say to everyone after you blow up their house? Um, uh, Jimmy, I'm the Fire Joker, and would you kindly escort me back to America? Hey, it's not my fault you didn't think my joke was funny. Oh, I see, so blowing up my house is on the same level to you as that stupid Canadian joke you made, huh? Oh my god, you two! You're really bringing that up again? That, your other jokes about Canada, and one or a thousand more I'm forgetting. Point is, Josh, your jokes are so bad they cause property damage. I'm here to ensure that you do something that's actually useful. Oh, you're one to talk, Mr. Double Top Five. I didn't mean that. Okay. What do you want? See, people like collabs, Josh. Okay, fine. I'll find a good music countdown topic we can talk no. about. No! We're gonna talk about that show you watch. Okay, fine. My next review is Mystery Bridal on Dust. the Friendship Express. You showed me that episode when you were in Canada. We're doing that one. But that's not until the second season. Mystery on the Friendship Express, mother f I'm never gonna get to Bridal Gossip, am I? So, this episode starts out in the Cakes Bakery. These kinds of puns are commonplace in the show, aren't they? Wait till you hear the names of all the cities. Could we maybe move things along? This here cake's a mighty heavy. Rob Big Macintosh? <laughs> yep. Whoa, 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 wait a second. How is he struggling to lift that? Um, Josh, that's a big fucking cake. I mean, look at it. It's wobblier than rubber. Appetizing. And he has to keep it balanced, too. That would be a challenge for anybody. But Big Macintosh is stronger than that. We see so in a previous episode. In the episode Hearts and Hooves Day, we see Big Mac and Cheerilee were tricked into drinking a love poison. A love what? Watch the episode. Anyways. In that episode, Big Mac was able to drag a two-story house out from its foundation and across Ponyville. By comparing Big Mac's height to the house, we can measure the house as approximately 14 feet in length and width and 13 feet in height, making the area of the base and the top of the house 196 feet squared and the walls 182 feet squared. The average weight of a house that material is 60 pounds per square foot. By taking into account the total surface area of the house multiplied by the material weight per square foot, that house weighed over 55,000 pounds. And that isn't even including indoor walls, furniture, the roof, or whatever else happened to be in that house, making his inability ability to carry a large cake completely ridiculous. Nobody said there'd be math. Hey, you wanted to call up with me, not my fault you're so zeta slow. Oh har diddy har. Still, there's one thing in that footage that you played that doesn't add up. Huh? If Big Mac was under the influence of this love poison, technically you can make the argument that the love poison was what gave him that enormous strength to begin with. You said this Cheerilee was also under the influence of the same poison, and showed she was able to easily break through a barricade of furniture, further supporting that this love poison also gives a strength boost. So what you're saying is... That's the power of love! No, 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 no! You're not bringing in this all while I'm here! Party pooper? This is precious cargo you're carrying! Yes, it took months of planning and testing. Months of planning and testing, huh? <laughs> I have done it! After months of planning and testing, I have completed the ultimate culinary masterpiece! I shall call it the Uber Cake! <laughs> Sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Cake. Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, a little peg assistance? Ha! So they finally get through to the train without a hitch, minus Mr. Cake getting his man card penalized with every passing second. Now all we have to do is get it... in? Wow, looks like someone's been taking lessons from Mr. Asparagus. My little pony... festivities. I can't wait to try all those tasty treats. And then dozens of parents got their panties in a twist because they thought that gesture promoted violence. 
So then Pinky decides to give a meticulous description about how mouth-wateringly delicious the cake supposedly is. That's why I call the marzipan mascarpone meringue madness the mmm. And it's sure to win first prize. This is not so. Ho ho ho! I am the stereotypical French asshole! Ho ho ho! This is against my exceptionally exquisite eclairs! Oh my god! His eclairs are powered by the Ark of the Covenant! Uh, actually, that's just that lamp he brought with him. My version's better. A chance, Legrand. Donut Joe! And enter New York stereotype! But sprinkles! My donuts are gonna dunk all the other lousy desserts! What's with the donut tramp stamp? Oh, that's their cutie mark. Their what now? I know how girly it sounds, but in a nutshell, it basically symbolizes a pony's calling in life and their special talent. Like, Twilight symbolizes her specialty in magic, rarity, the usage and location of precious gems, etc. And his cutie mark is a donut. His calling in life is donuts. Wow. Um, when you put it that way, I think we need to give him a hug. <laughs> no, I think we need to give him a straight jacket. So then we are introduced to this mule character with her entry a moose moose. Ha 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 ha. My chocolate moose moose. It will trample all your treats, be given first prize, and make me the greatest chef in Equestria. <laughs> I honestly can't tell what that accent's supposed to be. Seriously, what is it? It sounds like a cross between Prince Herbert from Holy Grail and him! Oh my god! Him made a dessert! Powerpuff Girls crossover! Well, it sure looks like we're in for a delicious competition tomorrow. Maybe we should all settle in for a good night's sleep. I'm French. <laughs> Wait! Didn't you hear those chefs? We have to protect them! hair is like friggin' jelly. How does it work? It's Pinkie Pie, don't question. I will question what I damn well please! Aw, oh, come on. Standing duty isn't that boring. There's plenty of ways to entertain yourself. Like watching a guy f a goat. Alex! Hey, you've seen Weirder on post. Remember the tofu in the glow belt? Well, that was... I don't know how that happened. Stop, you savagear! Stop right there, criminal scum! Because obviously the conductor is innocent. Somebody turn on the lights! I can't see shit! Knew I was gonna have to keep a close eye on you, and that's just what I'm gonna do. And, of course, Pinkie Pie falls asleep standing up. <sighs> well, at least she's a better guard than freaking Private Donut. Must have been a cat or something. <laughs> but as it turns out, Pinkie didn't catch the culprit. Oh, mm, you look mm, marvelous. Um, you better hold off on giving yourself an award just yet, Pinky. We're treated to a shot of Pinky's uvula, and we see that the cake's been sabotaged! What is it? What happened? It's the marzipan mascarpone meringue madness! It's been mutilated! <gasps> Are you gonna say the joke? No. Why would I say that joke? Oh, good, because that joke is way too obvious, and I don't want to make a- The cake is a lie. GO HOME, HADES! Well, having read many mystery novels- NERD! I know that the only way to discover the culprit is to investigate. Exactly! Oh hey! A Terra Strong character's in a bubble! Powerpuff Girls crossover! HATE! So, Piggy decides to play Sherlock Holmes and starts randomly accusing everyone, starting with- Hey, 
Hey, you haven't used that joke in forever. Besides, this scene is amazing! Okay, where do I even begin? I love how it pokes fun at every possible silent era cliche, from the mustache twirling villain to the damsel in distress train motif to the gloriously out of date intertitles. Get your claws off that cake, you cunt! Even then, this is hilarious in how it shows just how completely out of touch Pinky is with reality, to the point where she remembers last night completely differently. If you were tied to the train tracks, how are you now here? I think what clinches it, though, is the music. Somehow distorted music like this just does me in. Film enthusiasts. So, what's the logical thing to go to next after a silent film montage? A James Bond fantasy, of course. I suppose Comet enjoys his cream whipped, not spurred. Let me guess. The one on the left is Honey Rider. Uh. Oh, oh. How about Rosebud or Cream Pie? Uh. Oh, I've got lots more of this. You want me to go on? You take time out of your day to think of dirty pony names? Mmm, yes! Wait, did you see that? See what? Twilight did it! That hat is the one-hit kill! How many James Bond references are we packing in this thing? Who is not sleek, stealthy con maid? He's big, gruff, and messy! No offense? Although, you would look rather dapper in a tuxedo. Okay there, Joe. So, Pinky decides to go three for three and accuse the last baker of shifting to... Kill Bill? If you should encounter it on your trip, the mmm will be cut. Pinky, stop! This is ridiculous! Look at her! <laughs> that is the face of a woman who really needs to go potty. So why did this criminal devour the marzipan Oscar pomerang madness while leaving this trio of tasty treats untouched? Oh, <laughs> So all the desserts got eaten and Twilight takes over the investigation. Okay, Pinky. In order to really solve this mystery, we're gonna have to find clues. Is Twilight really wiping that pipe? Wow, I never expected her to be the spirit animal of Howie Mandel. Hey, secondhand smoking is a serious cause of health problems. So what? You don't wipe a cigar after you pass it off. And you know this... why? Because I'm a university student. Anyways, Twilight tells Pinky to recount what she did at the scene of the crime. Let's retrace your steps. Aha! Our first clue. Eureka! I think uh, I know can we see what it is? Already? No? Uh, yes. Okay, that's fine. But I need fine. more you, evidence you to, to confirm. Know. But that doesn't make any sense. Jeez, why is Twilight being such a tease with the evidence? Audiences don't like that sh**. I wanna talk if I were you, considering we haven't seen a countdown from you in months and all we got was just a title card. Seriously, what's the deal? You haven't posted any of your usual content lately and all we've been getting is just vague hints. What's going on? That would be my doing. Shut up, baby, I know. What next, Pinky? That's it! I was here guarding the cake the rest of the night. I mean, I slept by the cake the rest of the night. By Jove, I think I've got it! Did she just mention Job? No, she said Job, who's basically the Roman Zeus. <coughs> why are we all here again? I bet you're wondering why you're all here again. She's good. It's funny, because I'm an idiot! This! Aha! <gasps> uh -huh, a blue feather! I knew it was you! Gustav Legrand! Okay, there's being Pinkie Pie and there's just being daft. Pinky, Gustav doesn't have blue feathers. 
No, because he's been dying them! Careful, Pinky! That's his surrendering wing you almost injured! This! So it was you! That pink hair came from your rainbow-colored mane! I don't have pink in my mane, Pinky! So you're wearing a wig? Ow! Cut it out! Pluck the rainbow! Taste the rainbow! But that wasn't the conductor at all. It was... Fluttershy! You're going down, Fluttershy! Wow! Now that I think about it, Pinky's a pretty violent character. Wow. Has any pony else noticed that Rarity is wearing her hair rather differently today? I just thought it was an animation error. You know, they kind of happen all the time on this show, and they sometimes inadvertently cause a background character to become a huge cult phenomenon and eventually get a speaking role in the show, which is then deemed to be too offensive to be shown on television, causing massive flame wars and internet riots. Forgive me for not suspecting anything! Find I'm guilty! I wear both eyelashes! I took a bite of the cake. That ham was delicious! Oh, I'm sorry. I meant cake. But we still don't know who devoured the other baker's goods. So, Pinky actually investigates correctly, sort of, and finds the ones who ate the rest of the desserts. Gustav has moose in his moustache! And Joe has a Claire in his hair! And Mulia has sprinkles in her face! Oh my god! Screw King Sombra! That's going to give your kids nightmares! So then we get a moral about not jumping to conclusions and everyone sits down to eat the cake, including Princess Celestia. Care for a bite? I don't mind if I do. Is there any to be exploding after eating that whole cake? It's Pinkie Pie! Don't question it! This episode was f***ing awesome! This episode is a loving tribute to so many things. It's a tribute to Agatha Christie's original story, film history in general, and even typical mystery tropes. Most of the characters, including the new and main cast, are giving a ton of room to ham out their characters. And unlike most cartoons that involve a mystery, this one actually gives the audience a chance to solve it on their own, and wasn't too obvious with the reveal. Kid show, after all. Look, I don't consider myself a brony. I've only seen three episodes of MLP, and even though I can't picture myself watching it religiously, what I have seen of the show was quality. This episode in particular had me laughing to hysterics when I first saw it. The tributes it made were not only funny, but they also didn't sacrifice plot coherence for the sake of making a funny reference. Even if you had no idea what the references were anyways, the plot is still easy to follow, and the jokes don't really require context to laugh at. It appeals to both children and adults, which I really have to applaud. The moral is pretty tacked on, but then again, it's not a bad message, just not well emphasized. Besides, this one was more about the humor rather than actually giving a good moral. And did it succeed with the humor? Yes. Yes, it did. I'm the Fiery Joker. And I'm the Autark. What, no of flame? You're trying to make yourself sound less awesome? Oh, Josh. I may not have fire, but I can still skewer you! <laughs> I'm starting to rack up a body count. Cut!
Huh? Where am I? Oh, hello, Josh. Wait, what? Hades? Why am I in the underworld? I'm Christian. I'm Hades. I don't discriminate. Wow. I... don't know how to reply to that. Then we'll get along just fine. No, 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 not like that. Well, if you want to spoil a party. Look, how am I supposed to continue videos if I'm dead? You have a leftover shadow clone somewhere? Uh, it's been a while since overrated games, but probably. Oh, then this scene is easily retconnable. Just make up a rule that you can transfer your original consciousness to one of your clones whenever you feel like it. You seriously think they're gonna buy that? Believe it, Joshy. After all, Kingdom Hearts has gotten away with worse. Point taken. Uh... Shadow... Transfer... Nojutsu? I wish I could make clones of myself. Hmm...